In chapter six, the topic will be bones and skeletal tissues. So here we'll look more at what bones are made of rather than the specific bones and their names. So that'll be chapter seven, where we identify the different bones of the skeleton. So here we're gonna study bones from two perspectives. We're gonna study bones as a tissue or bony tissue. And we're also gonna study bones as organs uh, because bony tissue and other structures associated with them like blood vessels and nerves mean that whole bones are actually organs, but we can also study the specific tissue that makes up bones as well. So we're gonna look at bones from these two perspectives here. So at birth, we have approximately 270 bones, and as an adult, we have about 206 bones. So the question becomes, where do these roughly 64 bones go to? Do they just disappear? And the answer to that question is no, they do not. Uh, it turns out that as we age, bones tend to fuse together. So several nearby bones will tend to fuse together into one solid piece of bone as we age. So we have more bones when we are born and fewer bones as an adult. So. so let's look at functions of bones real briefly. The main functions that we attribute to bones are things like support and protection. So bones, of course, provide the internal supportive framework for the body, and those bones will also help to cradle the soft organs as well. So they provide a a, an internal support framework for, for those. Bones also protect soft, delicate organs, so think like the brain inside of the skull, the lungs, and the heart inside of the thoracic cage. So those, those are all organs that are uh, quite vulnerable and quite delicate, and so we need bone to, to protect them. They also serve as anchorage for skeletal muscles, so they provide a point for skeletal muscles to attach to and give the skeletal muscles leverage so that they can help uh, to move the skeleton. Bones also function in mineral storage and primarily they store the minerals calcium and phosphorus and so in this way bones act as a bank in which deposits and withdrawals of minerals can occur fairly regularly. We also see that bones function to form blood cells in a process that is called hematopoiesis. So hematopoiesis occurs in a, spe uh, a special type of red uh, bone marrow called red bone marrow. Uh, we also have yellow bone marrow, but yellow bone marrow is a primarily an adipose tissue uh, storage site, which brings me to our next function of bones, storing adipose tissue. Uh, so we see that in certain places, in certain cavities within our bones, we have, uh, we have reserves of adipose tissue in there as well. Bones also, uh, to a lesser extent, produce hormones, and the primary hormone that they produce is a hormone called osteocalcin, which functions in regulating insulin secretion, uh, and as you are uh, probably familiar with, even if you're not um, fully familiar with the, the endocrine system as a whole, we're at least kind of superficially familiar with the hormone insulin because it regulates um, the ability for the body to uptake glucose. And so osteocalcin functions in regulating insulin secretion as well as homeostasis of glucose, which is our primary sugar fuel.